alive, tenacious freak. What's up, everybody? Welcome, gents. I was with you. <laughs> Winter is coming. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. How are you? Welcome to see you. Wow, we already have nine people in the room. Holy cow, this is going to be a great show. Thank you so much. Welcome to the weekly beer and video review show with me, Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan, and we are super excited for today's show. I got some amazing beers. I got some great videos to talk about. And what's up, everybody? All the regulars, gents, Aquanuts, Dronatic. You guys, we are clicking in, and oh, man, Aston's here. Sophia, <laughs> hey, Nana, all right, Baro, what's up, everybody? First of all, thank you so much for joining me. I am excited. Like I said, we have some fun stuff to do. Um, I don't even know where to start on this show today. Already we have eight people in the room. Be sure to smash that like button. Let me know that you're here. Hello, everybody. And it is on and popping. And like I said, I don't know what to start with, but let's get right into the show. Greg Z is in the house. And how about the Buffalo Bills? Hey, hey, hey what's up? And Nana is here from Mexico. Everyone say hello to Sophia from Mexico City. We have a nice bunch in here already. We are ready to get started. I want to start off with the congratulations to the first Bills <laughs> Aque de Especial Mexico City. And we are pumped up to have you here, Nana. Thank you so much. We are pumped that the Bills won the first game. That's right, Buffalo Bills. We are 1-0. and We just played to the Jets, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But I am psyched up. I am pumped up. I'm ready to go. And, well, I think I've started something new. I think I'm going to start and create something each and every time the Bills win. Aston, what's up? Who is first in the sh in the room today? We, we need to start keeping log because if you're first five times, well, <clears throat> then I'm going to go ahead. What do we got here? Yes, Mike, cousin Mike. Yes. And dad is here. Hey, 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 hey. Remember, my house is your house. Nana, I cannot wait to come to Mexico City. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and I would love to see you. I want to eat some really good mole. Um, okay, so I've started a new segment here. <laughs> I've invited a Corona beer. All right, the new segment is if the Buffalo Bills win, we're starting off with a chug. That's right, we're going to slam one beer to get the show started. So, oh, what do we got? He was here, freak, but they uh, kicked me off, so I had to go back into it. So, we're going to go ahead, and since we're doing a lot of cans, we're going to go ahead and slam this one, a little Stella, to celebrate the Bills' victory. We got the red bottle opener, in case you missed it. We've been doing a lot of cans. <laughs> yes, Duff! Yeah, just another kid from Kenmore is here. I like to see that. We're going to start it off and slam a full 12-ounce bottle of this Belgian beer before we do anything in celebration of the Bills. But what w better way to do it than to do it out of a special glass? And that's what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the beer mug. All right, the Buffalo Bills beer mug. Now, I was going to use this as a regular mug, but you won't be able to see the color of the beer. So, therefore, when the Bills win, we'll... Hey, we got... You're, go you're forgetting it. I forget. I don't even know how to say your name but nice to see you nice to have you here when the bills win we're gonna slam a beer out of this cup donate it to us from one of my bills club members the host club member max lapita shout out to you max all right this is for you and this is for the bills okay this is a full stella bottle to start off the show and one gulp <clears throat> we're not gonna do any shots but we're gonna start it off here so guys Hey, 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 yeah, welcome, welcome. This is for the Buffalo Bills. Let's get it down. Dad, if you got one, pound it, because we are victorious today. Yes! All right, Sophia is a Bills fan from Mexico City. Ah, Steve's here, brother Steve. I'm slamming this. Here we go. And a one, a two, a three. The Bills are one and oh, to many, many more. Here we go. Wow. Hey. All gone, guys. We got a little North End love going on. Duffy saying hi to my dad. Dad saying back to Duffy and to Steve. And it is time to get the show started. I am pumped up. I am amped up. I am ready to go. Thank you for joining us. Whether you're watching from India, Denmark, Norway, England, 
Buffalo, South Carolina, Mexico City. Thank you so much, guys. Let's get started. Without further ado, we got some great beers to do. And uh, let me introduce you to the first one. The first beer, excuse me. The first beer is another beer from Cousin Brian's stash. Cousin Brian sent us a bunch of beers, enough for six weeks worth of show. And this one, I'm really looking forward to it because not only is it super strong, it's got a great name. And anytime you have a strong beer with a great name, it's something to look forward to. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you today to today's first beer from Lord Hobo Brewing Company. Boom sauce, that's right. We got the boom sauce, check it out. Boom, in your face, boom, in your face. Hey Steve, what's that? I don't know, what is that? A boom sauce, all right. Check it out guys, this is a double A IPA. It registers at a 7.8%. Lord Hobo, I know, what a great name. Lord Hobo Brewing. All right, kind of reminds me of my dad. <laughs> what a great label, everything. The double IPA registers at a 7.8%. How about some Tecate Red? Ooh, Nena, would you like Tecate? Um, Nena is from Mexico City. She is probably a drinker of Tecate. But we're doing this one, 7.8%. Looks to be pretty good. Love the label, great name. Boom sauce, too easy to com come in. <laughs> Greg? Keep it clean. All right, first, here we go. We're cracking this sucker open. We're gonna take a waft of the double IPA. Uh, my prediction is spot on. I smell nothing but a strong, hoppy flavor. Okay, well, okay, we're gonna hopefully, you know, double IPAs, uh, it, you know, Tenacious Freak says it's gonna be dark. I'm betting that it's gonna be somewhere in the medium because, well, I don't think it's gonna be a full range dark beer, and I don't think it's gonna be one of those hazy IPAs, so we're gonna find out. But right away, as I waft in the smell from the can, I can smell really hoppy ice, a really hop, I can smell a really hoppy IPA flavor, and that's the way I like it. We're gonna go back to the regular beer glass, the see-through one, so that you can see what color it is. And here we go, here's the Lord Hobo Boom Sauce. Oh yeah, baby, look at that, okay. Take a look, Freak. It's not as dark as I think um, that you thought it was. It, the color is really starting to look more like a Pilsner, right? Okay, it's kind of light. It's got that yellow, orangish color to it. Smells really good, I mean, very aromic, okay? Really, I can smell the hops. Look at the carbonation beautiful head on it and once again we have the ipa tornado i have no idea why ipas have this weird little dark cloud of tornado this little swirly thing going down into it hey guys this is what we're drinking take a look if you're just hopping on the carbonation is okay it's still as i put it up in the light it's still got a lot of bubbles that are leaving the bottom of the glass and hurrying to the top to get to that head mountain. It's got a real strong smell to it of hops. Um, if you're just hopping on, guys, how's my stream doing? Everyone good over there? I still love those glasses. Thank you, Aston. Yeah, these ones. Now, I think more towards uh, the, the next month. Maybe we should do a, a once a month. We're going to bring out the big mama jammers, the ones that Tenacious Freak and Aquanut sent me from Denmark. Stream is good. Thank you, Jens. But this is what we're drinking now, the boom sauce. I'm going to go ahead and take a first sip of it. Okay, here we go. Ooh, not bad. All right, not bad. <laughs> What's well, a small glass? Yeah. It's a little bit smaller than the, the ones that were sent to me from Denmark. You need a special glass for IPAs. I, I thought this is what you drink IPAs, but I'll look into that, Pops. Really nice taste to it. It's got your standard IPA taste to it. Although it is a double, you can definitely taste the strength in it. I can definitely taste a lot of hops going around in there and almost the complexity of also a, a fruit flavor going on in there. So. Let's go ahead and set that thing down and we'll get into parts of the segment. But really nice first sip. We're drinking the boom sauce. Thanks to Cousin Brian. Juna Tick's here. Jens is here. Greg Z. Pops. Duffy. Everybody's here. Thank you so much. And 
super, super fan, Barro. <laughs> All right, guys. Now, I want to talk about the video that came out last week. As we are gearing up to go, I have one at Uncle John's. Dad, I'd love to see it. Take a picture of it and send it to me, please. I'd love to see what an IPA class um, goes to because as I evolve as a show, nothing will ever take the place of the glasses, the mugs, the monster mega cups were, at, were sent from Denmark. Nothing. Those are number one, period. I don't care what kind of glass. I don't care if I had a glass that was curvy or wervy like this and a yard long. I don't care if I had a glass that was like this way or just nothing takes first place like my friends Tenacious Freak and the Aquanut sent me. So really pumped about that. <laughs> So that's one name, Max. Are you watching? Oh, okay. I thought Max might be watching, but um, but the thing is, is as this show show evolves, I'm eventually going to have guests on, and I'm going to eventually, well, dive more into the the, the snotty, the, the the snooty, the hoity toity stuff. And uh, what I mean by that is, I'm not going to get too complex with you, but uh, straight out of the bottle for me, most of the time, that's the way I like it too, Greg. But we are going to start narrowing down some glasses because i know like a lot of belgium beers use that weird little goblet how about my shanghai brewery glasses yeah those are badass dad um i bought my dad some glasses <laughs> hey sophia cheers travel man dan tenacious freak all right anyway where the hell were we i'm getting so excited guys i want to go into the show right now and that's talking about the videos that came out last week um <clears throat> now i know my channel may be a little confusing. You guys, you're here with me every week, so you understand it. But for new people, they might come to my channel because they see Travel Man Dan. So they think, obviously, well, it's Travel Fox. And then they get to the channel and they're like, okay, I see travel, but I also see food. And I also see like a beer review. And then what the hell is this Reading Man Dan stuff? All right. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. If you want to grow on YouTube, if you want to go really quick to the top and you want to get, you know, as many views as possible and you want to grow faster, then my suggestion to you is keep it niche specific. All right. So in my case, I should only be doing food videos. I should only be doing travel videos. I should only be doing reading Mandan videos or start another channel. But for me, I'm like, you know what? For years and years and years, I've been toting around inside the entertainment world here in Hollywood and all over the world with producers, casting people, telling me, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. The thing I love about YouTube it is my channel, okay? The network is YouTube, the channel is mine, okay? And I can put whatever show I want on it. So it may take longer for me to grow, but yet I'm still continuing to put out content that I enjoy making. So if you come to my channel and you're expecting travel and that week is a Reading Van Van video, I'm sorry about that. It's nothing against you. I'm probably doing it uh, slower than most people, but that's what I like to do. To grow faster with your views, you really need to dress a bit more sexy. Greg, baby, what's wrong with this? This is it, man. The red, white, and blue of the Buffalo Bills. All right? <laughs> I like reading, man, Dan. See? Yes, Bubba's in the house. All right, so my point being is, well, I'm doing it my way, okay? I'm doing it UHF style. This is my channel. I'm the director. I'm the producer. I'm the network showrunner. I'm also the actor and the host. So you're going to see some stuff on here that, well, not in line with the travel man dan travel show once we're able to start traveling again yes you're going thank you tenacious freak hello bubba yes the best thing to do is be authentic aston you said it may take longer but i would rather have a smaller group of people like yourselves enjoying me and what i do rather than putting it out there and being fake about it and not really enjoying it so i enjoy what i do um and the next week's video or last week's video was a reading man dan video it's one of my favorite books to read not only because it's such a classic but it was also given to me i started this during quarantine it was nothing five months ago and i got a cool sponsorship with uh, early moments books and they sent me a bunch of dr seuss books and i'm talking about this book right here 
green eggs and ham. <laughs> green eggs and ham is one of the most classic Dr. Seuss books that you ever <laughs> watch it paint dry. Well, Greg, paint your house and you can do that. One of the classic books. I mean, let me just read you a little sample if you haven't checked out this video. You do not like them, so you say, try them. Try them and you may. Try them and you may, I say. All right, look at this. Sam is just trying to get him to eat these green eggs and ham. Now, what I love about this book is obviously the catchy, quirky rhymes and the fun stuff for kids and stuff. But it also teaches a little lesson about being persistent on the one guy like Sam I am. And he's also being like, hey, you got to try these. I think I am an Air Force child. <laughs> <Great. laughs> green eggs and ham. Well, uh, yeah, you're, you consider yourself lucky, Bubba, and thank you for your service. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, and the other hand is like, it also teaches, hey, look, you know, uh, at least try it, right? Um, and the thing is, is that with this book, it's got a really cool core correlation with traveling because sometimes you're traveling and you see some things that you're not used to eating or you're not familiar with or some habits and things like that. And um, well, you may never have tried Shaolin Bao, but then you try it and it's absolutely delicious. Or you never tried this thing over in, in South Africa, but then you try it and it's delicious. That's kind of what Dr. Seuss meant with green eggs and ham. But really fun book. If you haven't seen it, go ahead, check it out. It came out last week on my channel. It's eventually going to shift to once a week on Tuesdays when I start traveling again. And I'm literally looking forward to that. So um, I'll be doing a, the Travel Man Dan Show, the Reading Man Dan Show, the Food Friday Show. I had some interest foods in Iceland. Yes, exactly, like some weird pickled stuff. And obviously, my favorite, this one. Uh, 10 likes equals a shot. Dad, we're not doing a shot until the end of the show. We already went through this. I can't be doing it because I noticed if I do a shot early, then comes another one, and then my eye starts closing like this. I start slurring out of the side of my mouth like this, and then the show just doesn't end up that well. Now, you never realize somebody or your friend is like this at a bar. But listen, I can't do the show. <laughs> you know, boo out there could be. <laughs> yeah, I just can't do it, guys. Towards the end of the show, I promise you, if we want, we'll do a show or slam another beer. But if you're just hopping on, that's the video that came out last week. This is the beer we are drinking. It is a delicious double IPA. And so it is really strong. It is called Boom Sauce. Got the best brewery name lord hobo okay he's the king of the hobos all right the master of bums <laughs> you looked like popeye then yeah exactly I, yeah, yeah put him up <laughs> that's how i look when i do shots right but most of the time it's covered up <clears throat> during the bar right <laughs> double ipa just under eight percent greg it's at 7.8 let's go back in for another swig i'll let you know what it tastes like Can't drink like your little brother. Yeah, right. The little bro will go down. Really nice beer. All right. Now, a lot of these IPAs that I drink, they come off as really like a hop. Yeah, I know. Super, super cool name. They, the, a lot of the IPAs, they come off as a really, um, well, obviously super hoppy. But then they also have a hint of like a citric flavor. And predominantly, the citric flavor is more of a grapefruit flavor. But what I'm tasting on this one seems to be more of a lemon zeal, like a lemon squeezed inside my beer type taste. And it's really good, nice and refreshing. Doesn't really overpower you like a double IPA sounds like it would, but it's a really nice one. It's got the boom sauce, so if you ever want to show up to a party, and you know, it's always a fun thing, like, hey, yo, what'd you bring? boom sauce you know what i mean like you just really just animate the hell out of that and be excited to show everyone that you brought the boom sauce what'd you bring boom sauce you know what i mean like really just get into that one you know i should probably bring the can so you walk in all cool and everything hey danny what'd you bring i brought the boom sauce you know what i mean like you just really have some fun with that so you always got that going for you <laughs> lemon is good and wheat beers yeah i gotta agree with you dad um, I do like lemon and, 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 and uh, the wheat beers. Hey, Dan, make yourself time to visit Jasper, Canada. Great. Dude, I heard about Jasper, Canada. Hey, um, 
it, it's in Alberta, right? I heard it's really good. Uh, you know, if you um, if you watch any of the earlier shows, the only beer to ever score a ten on this show is the Labatt's Brew, Labatt's Blue from Canada. So I love Canadian beer. I grew up on the border in Buffalo, New York, and for me, I, I feel like it's such a I look back on it now and I feel so blessed to have grown up in Buffalo for the fact that Buffalo is a really great city, right? It's cheap, it's full of good people, it gets really, I mean, yeah, it has a lot of snow and it's cold and stuff, but the people are used to it and, and, you know, we do get months of summer, but one of the other really cool things, yes, I agree, Bubba, one of the really cool things about living in Buffalo is that you're so close to such a great country like Canada. So really, really fun stuff and I'll try to make it out there to Jasper. Um, that would be exciting. One of these days, I'd love to um, to just drive, like, uh, you know, take a, take about six months and do as many states as I can plus Canada. That would be the Travel Man Dan experience. I've been to Edmonton. Dad, what would you think of Edmonton? I know you were there a couple times when it was really cold, but, um, but it's a different kind of cold. Hey, look, guys, now with that segment called COVID-19. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying, um, well, making all the necessary precautions. Check this out. Big shouts out to Maria. Maria Lepius. Yes, you are awesome, Maria. Maria is the host mom to the Buffalo Bills Club. And I walked in to our Buffalo Bills team club meeting. And uh, um, she is just, she's just awesome. Because not only does she care for us, she's supportive. Um, and... Uh, you know just a, a great person but I come in and she's like did you get your stuff and I'm like what stuff you know usually we just pig out on donuts and wings and things like that and she slaps this one on me check this guy out oh, oh, oh. so not only am I staying safe for COVID-19 but I'm staying safe with the best possible way and that is this awesome Buffalo Bills mask I mean this thing is sw so sweet it's durable it's got these little things here that are adjustable right adjustable so they're not pulling your ears back it's comfortable yeah this thing is it's colorful and then it's even on the inside it's got some kind of weird like fabric here and it's um it's 2.5 m really bitchin really love this thing thank you so much maria and um well to each and every one of you guys wherever you are in the world i hope that you're staying safe yes borrow buffalo bills mask Baro, nothing would make me more happy to see you in northern India wearing one of these guys. <laughs> yeah, this is this is pretty sweet. What I'd like to get is some Travel Man Dan masks. <laughs> Send us all one. Well, hey, LOL. What's up? Big ups. Good to have you here. Guys, we got 16 people in the room right now. This is, uh, this is coming up on almost the highest we've ever had. I think the most we've ever had in at one time is 20 people. But really, quickly, I just hope that you're safe. Stay safe out there. Wear your mask where you're supposed to. Um, wash your hands. Do all this stuff that the World Health Organization, the CDC, whatever you got to do, it's going to pass. We're all going to come out of this thing. Be strong with it. Um, you know, we're all going to come back and look back about this thing and, and just, you know, where are you at? So I, I encourage you stay diligent with being precautious. Okay. Half to 16 deserves a shot. Pops, I told you, we're not doing a shot yet. But, um, but really, um, you know, really concentrate. <laughs> I'm going to come out of this thing physically, spiritually, and mentally better. Um, yeah, you can do it wherever you are. And uh, let's, we, we, the one thing that is absolute is that we need each other for this thing. So uh, don't bring any unwarranted stress. Don't stress yourself out there. That's, that's today's quick little motto. You know, don't make yourself crazy about what other people are doing out there. Take care of yourself. Um, try not to make too much noise in a negative way, if you will, and just really take care of yourself. I hope that you're safe, because I need you here every Sunday as we quickly approach 20 people. If we get 21 people, wow, it's going to be, oh baby, that will break the record for the most people in the room live at one time. But guys, if you're just hopping on right now, this is what we're drinking. It is a delicious double IPA called Boom Sauce from Lord Hobo Brewing sent to me. I forgot the names. 
It is called Lord Hobo Boom Sauce. Okay, and it's sent to me from Cousin Brian. It looks good. Which names did you forget? Uh, today's a treat. Wow. Really good. Now, like I said, it's got a smooth, creamy taste to it. It's not like so crisp, right? It's still got that kind of heavy body going on to it. When you drink it, it's almost like you're you're drinking like a thicker kind of drink, but it's clean, right? So it's not too bad. I definitely enjoy it, and if you get a chance and you see Boom Sauce, you got to try it. So please, um, if you see it, try it out. Hey guys, how about a quick one for uh, all the people in California, Oregon, and Washington State that are um, that are experiencing their lives being upside down. Every year in California, we have these crazy wildfires, and right now we're at one of the most dominant, um, one of the most prolific, one of the, the largest fires we've ever seen. I mean, it's not just one fire. When I say fire, it's everywhere. I mean, the sky in Los Angeles has been orange since last Wednesday, like literally orange. And then, and, and, and when you look at the pictures of San Francisco and, and parts of Oregon, it's been like bright orange. It's, it's crazy, man. Um, you know, the air QI is about 160, which is very high for the United States. In the United States, yeah, it's insane. I mean, all these people that, can you imagine? I mean, I've struggled most of my adult life making money. But let's just say that I was to go ahead and make some money. And you build your, you know, your your stockpile. You get your three percent for your first time home buyer in America, and you move to a place like Oregon or Northern California or Washington, out a little bit from the city, and you build your dream home there. You got some kind of cabin. Maybe it's a fixer upper, but you add an addition, and that thing is awesome. And you have two amazing years there. You got your family, and everything's moved in there. So just imagine the situation of this neighborhood. And then a little bit of you know ambers and fires they just completely wiped the entire house out now i work in construction so i deal with a lot of people from two years ago that are still rebuilding their home from the malibu fire yeah the fire zones it's um it's crazy because the you know these people they still can't even get fire insurance like where i'm from and in, in buffalo and in kenmore new york i don't know if fire insurance is even a thing but out here it's, it's a major liability for companies and it's super expensive. Imagine having to pay like $300 additionally to all the other stuff that you pay for your home just for fire insurance. And, um, and then a fire comes and it comes quick, man. I've seen it. I've been probably about 300 yards away from two major forest fires here in California. One of my old job when I was working on a mountain and another one where I was just driving by and I got stopped by the uh, fire department and the fire was spreading so quick. It was literally like 20 feet from me. And boy, you've never seen or felt anything like a giant forest fire. It, it is like I was in my car and you could feel like it was sweating. Hey, Dan, you're fantastic. Sorry from last time. Nice to catch your stream. Hey, no problem. Did you Wait a minute. Dennis, are you? You're not Dennis from Lithuania, are you? Please. Yeah, um, built a moat around your house. Yeah, we, we need to do something like that. It's just devastating. So if you can, I know um, everybody's going through this crazy pandemic. Um, understand the United States is going through a ton of stuff between the pandemic and the social injustice and riots. And then now the California wildfires is just really, it's, it's turning. A, <clears throat> he is from Denmark. Yes, what's up, Denmark? Yes, good to see you. I thought that was you, Dennis. Good to see you. Nice to have you here. I wasn't sure if you were the guy from last time or if you were the guy I met in Lithuania at the meat bar. But thank you for showing up. If you're uh, curious to what we're drinking, we are drinking Boom Sauce. I know it's late in Denmark, so thank you so much for staying up. Please, guys, just put in your thought, put in your heart. The people in California, Oregon, Washington, um, even if they don't align with you politically, they're still losing their life. And um, me as American, I hate to see this stuff. So yeah, it's um, it's tragic. So moving right along, guys, now it's time for show and tell. And show and tell is a lot of fun. It's gonna be really fun. My family have been out there, home buyers, luckily did not lose anything. Good, Drunatic. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that because um, 
you know, I've, I've known people. My friend just lost everything in Oregon. Um, and uh, yeah, it's sad, man. It's sad. It's, it's, it's all the little heirlooms. You know, obviously your life is most important, but all the other little stuff that you can lose. And um, man, it would just, it, 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 would, it would break my heart to see anybody after all their life save everything, put it into a house, and then have it lost. So uh, anyway, on, on, on another note, let's go into the show and tell. Today's show and tell is a lot of fun. Today's show and tell brings us to Southeast Asia, one of my favorite countries, one of my favorite places to visit, one of the coolest places, one of the cheapest places, one of the places if you're considering a vacation, I strongly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. The people are great. Food is excellent. I'm talking about Vietnam. That's right. Today's show and tell is a little piece of Vietnam. And I'm talking about one of my favorite drinks in the world. No, not beer. No, not water. I'm talking about coffee. And guys, I don't know if you've ever had one before. I don't know if you've ever tried one. It's a little bit different than regular brewed coffee. But I'm talking about a Vietnamese coffee. And that is today's show and tell. I'm going to go ahead and after this video, I'll drop it down in the, in the description. Everything that you can go ahead and order if you want to try out a Vietnamese coffee. It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's amazing. You're going to love it. Um, and uh, let me show you how it, how it goes. So first thing you do is you need a cup, right? Now, I grabbed the glass cup this time. You can use a coffee cup, right? It, it's, there, there's nothing wrong with using a coffee cup. Typically, I do use a coffee cup. The only time I use the glass coffee cup is because that's what they use in Vietnam. They give you like a weird coffee, uh, glass cup like this. Now the first thing you need, and I don't have it, it's over there in the fridge back behind me, is condensed milk, okay? In America we have like the carnation uh, uh, condensed milk, we have uh, other kind, but the really nice part of America is they always try to make it easier. So for Vietnamese coffee you do need a couple squirts or a couple, like just about a teaspoon and a half or a tablespoon and a half of condensed milk to make it really authentic Vietnamese coffee. So they've added the squeeze bottle, right? So there's a squeeze bottle. But if you don't have it, you can go ahead and you can open it up. It's usually like one of those peely cans and then you put it with tin foil. Put about a tablespoon of condensed milk on the bottom of this, right? So that's all it is, is a cup, glass cup, coffee cup, but inside is condensed milk. Then you have this guy right here. This is your contraption, all right? This is a Vietnamese coffee maker. I know, it seems weird, right? Okay, but I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, so here's what we do. We take this little hat off, this is whatever, and this is what it looks like inside, okay? Now, we also have this piece right here. You're wondering what this is, and I'm gonna show you. Sorry, when I forget, tenacious to low. <laughs> no problem. All right, so these are the components, and this comes off. You can see where this is graded. So the first thing we're gonna do is put that thing on top of the glass cup with the um, milk in it, the evaporated or um, condensed milk. Then we have the traditional Vietnamese coffee is the best kind is this one, Trung Nguyen. Okay, this is the premium stuff right here. This is like the number one stuff and like I said before, I will go ahead and put it down in the description below so that you're able, that if you're curious to try it, I mean, you can probably find it in most Vietnamese um, restaurant or restaurants definitely but also vietnamese like supermarkets so this is what we do then we take this part the big part and we put it on here like that okay then we're gonna go ahead and i'm opening it up okay and we're gonna take one giant tablespoon of the vietnamese coffee check it out okay you see me sprinkling it in there okay then i'm gonna take a little bit more we're gonna put a little bit more in there just sprinkle it in there okay and i'll show you what it looks like okay today's show and tell is a lot of fun because i love coffee just as much as i beer all right so that's what it should look like all right we see the coffee in there we have the cup like this with the uh, condensed milk then we bring in this part and what you want to do is drop it in there like that so we see here we dropped it in there and then you want to just go ahead and even it out a little bit okay make it flat so there we have the cup with this thing in here. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it on top like this. Now, here's the best part. So we have the cup, 
Then we have down here the condensed milk. Then you need hot water. So usually you can take like a tea kettle like this, right? Now I'm not going to do it because I'm not really ready for it. But then we just pour it here all the way to the top. And then once it gets to the top, it's going to get very hot. Be careful. This tin gets very hot. All this. Then you're going to go ahead and put this top on there. And you're going to wait about two to three minutes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> turn a tick. You got to try this one out. If you've never tried this coffee out, you're going to love it. Now be careful because now through the one or two minutes, it's going to slowly drip down and fill it. It's only going to fill it to about here. So then you got to go ahead and take it here like this, lift it up, put some more water in there and put it back on. But be careful. This thing gets hot, even this little tip. You got to do it about two to three times, depending on how big your glass is. You want to get it to a right about here, right? Then you have your condensed milk. Then be really careful. All this for one small coffee. That's a lot of work. <laughs> I know, I know, but trust me, it's it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. And well, it's it's nice to try different styles of coffee. Weekly coffee and video version. <laughs> Borrow maybe one day if I check in the AA. But yeah, I just wanted to do this for show and tell. Now, what I usually do is take a napkin, hold the napkin, take this off, go like this, stir it up, and drink it up. <laughs> I know it seems like a lot of work, guys. I know it seems kind of like, ah, oh, geez. And, and I learned to make one cup of coffee as a drink. I know, but um, look, I'm not a really fan. <laughs> Laugh, love the, Jens knows what I'm talking about. Dennis, you know what I'm talking about. Listen, I know I'm used to like just going through Starbucks and ordering the brewed coffee or just putting on a pot of coffee. That's the way I'm used to it. I love that coffee. Definitely. Uh, just it's worth it. It's it's definitely worth it. You know when it's worth it? It's 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 one of those things like, yeah, you're right, okay? After after work or during work or before work. You just want the coffee and drink it and like, let's go, I'm ready to work, I'm ready to work, I'm working for the man. But I'm talking about like, all right, you finish dinner, you have a nice dinner, you have a nice meal, you're sitting there, you're gonna have a nice piece of pie or a cake or some kind of strudel or some kind of delicious Danish anything. Um, and then you want a nice cup of coffee. So as you're sitting there talking, you prepare it, get it ready, pour it, you know, it's something slowly. Everything's not got to be rushed, 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 rushed. Pour it, drink it, stir it up. It's definitely worth it, guys. I definitely try. I start the day with coffee. Nice piece of pie. <laughs> Greg, I knew you would have something to say. Yeah, me too. I start the day with a... This is what I start my day with. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not even a... First thing I do in the morning is brew a cup of coffee. Absolutely, right here. I drink, so whatever, how much coffee is that? But I'm saying... If you want a nice treat, treat yourself to a Vietnamese coffee. That's today's show and tell. I hope you liked it. Now, let's get back into the beer. Guys, we're drinking Boom Sauce. Boom Sauce Double IPA. Really good stuff. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Like I said, it's got, it's got a nice herbal zippy flavor to it, if you will. It's got more of a lemony rather than a grapefruit taste. Um, the complexity is not too strong. I start the day with a cup of coffee, a tea. Yeah, Indian people usually drink tea. So um, whatever your preference is, I'm just wanted to show you and introduce to you because this is still, you know, that's the thing about it. This is still a broad spectrum of travel, right? And you're going to see the way that different cultures drink and eat things differently and the Vietnamese coffee is definitely a worthwhile suggestion for you to try I hope you get a chance to it's delicious and let's keep on moving now the funny thing is next tomorrow's video the micro Monday tenacious freak big hugs bro all right thank you for helping me find the spot on you know uh, you know that's the thing with YouTube you got to figure out what works and uh, nothing helps me more is when you comment and suggest so that way I can take my thoughts and kind of take your thoughts and kind of find out where my sweet spot is. So cheers, skull to that. I found a nice sweet spot in next week's video. Tomorrow's video is hilarious because it was when I was on uh, that show, that science fiction show called Kun Lun. And the thing is when you're in China 
What beer are we on? Brian! Yes! Cousin Brian's here! Cousin Brian, the donator. We are on Boom Sauce. Everybody, welcome Cousin Brian, who has graciously donated all of the last beers. All right? These are the last... These, these last four weeks of shows have been donated to me by my cousin Brian. Thank you so much. Yeah, Micro Monday, the sweet spot, all that good stuff. Now, one of the things about in most westernized countries are, especially here in America, if you're traveling, if you're backpacking, if you're camping, and you need to wash your clothes, <laughs> yes, trying to take, if you need to wash your clothes, you could probably go to a, a coin laundry. In any city, any town, any small little area, you pull in, there's washer, dryers, both. But in China, that's not always the case. So when I'm on the road and I can't wash my clothes, especially, you know, I can go a little bit longer on the jeans. Um, I bring enough clothes. And then even in China, you can always buy a shirt or buy pants. I guess you could underwear and socks too, but... If I'm there for a long time, I'd rather clean them. Tanisha Free thinks, and wow, you cheers in Danish. Nice, yes, school. That's right. <clears throat> I love the Danes. You guys are great. I hope one day um, that I'm able to travel back to Copenhagen and bring uh, my cousin Brian, my uncle John, and my dad. <laughs> that would be awesome, guys. A trip to Copenhagen and then down for the Travel Man Dan in Munich over at the Oktoberfest. But anyway, ramble, ramble, ramble. So what I was saying is, the Micro Monday is me washing my socks and underwear inside the sink in a hotel in China. Really fun, really interesting perspective, and it just kind of puts it all in place of like, look, dude, um, yeah, I'm an actor, and uh, I've been in some movies, I've been in television shows, but, you know, you have to stay uh, humble to where you are, because, you know, people hear that and they think, um, one, either, no, no, I've never seen you, you're a joke, or two, oh, wow, he's super famous, whatever. It's none of that. It's about the daily life, and sometimes you, you still have to make do, right? So, I'm still doing things that backpackers do, and the... I'm just a little bit older, so I'd rather spend a little bit more money, uh, say 15 to $40 extra if I had to on nicer hotels so that I have my hotel space and I'm able to decompress. Because now, when doing videos and stuff, I also have to give out the computer and do a lot of like metadata and things like that, editing and stuff. But um, I was short on underwear. I needed to clean socks, so I did them in the sink, and tomorrow's video, you're going to see what it looked like when I had to go ahead and scrub my socks and underwear in a hotel in China. And um, yeah, a lot of fun. It's just a really cool, fun, and exciting Micro Monday episode. I hope you get a chance to check it out. Let me know what you think on the YouTube comments, okay? It always helps me after the video is done if you comment on it. And um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so now it's time for one of our favorite segments of the day. And I'm talking about what would you rather. Get ready. We got a fun time. Who do we got, Brian? If you are short on undies, turn them inside out. <laughs> you know, I've heard that. Uh, who do we got? Brayden, we missed you at Viewpoint. Brayden, what's up? Big hugs to you and the Viewpoint crew. Uh, I got one of my students here. I miss you guys too. Listen, please do me a favor. Whoever you talk to, whoever you're in contact with, I, I love you kids. You were great. I enjoyed each and every day coming there and teaching you guys. Thank you so much for hopping on the show. Um, you know, if none of you guys know this before, I was, a, I was a substitute teacher and I had just the greatest schools and the greatest kids. And some of them hop up here on the show. And uh, Braden's here. So thank you so much for hopping on. Please say hello to everyone. Let them know Mr. D, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan, is doing just fine. I hope you're doing well. Wherever you're doing, if you're doing distance learning, yada, 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 I miss you. Um, <laughs> and uh, now it's time for the really fun stuff, and that is the segment called What Would You Rather? Get ready. Okay, so the first four are good. The last five is disgusting. Now, please, do me a favor. Listen, say hello to Braden. Give him a warm welcome, guys. 
Braden from Viewpoint High School. Give him a shout out. Welcome. You are here with Mr. D, aka Travel Man Dan. We are having a good time on the weekly beer and video review show. And it is time for one of our favorite segments. If you're just hopping on, this is what we're drinking. The Boom Sauce. Go ahead, give me the like. We got 16 people in the room. 16. Just take a shower with them on. <laughs> you ever notice my family says the wackiest shit? Cousin Brian says, turn them inside out. My dad, my father, the man who raised me, tells me, yeah, hey, just take a shower with him on. <laughs> we're drinking boom sauce. Gonna take a quick sip and then we're getting into the weekly what would you rather. 16 likes. That's awesome. Yes, it is. We are growing each and every week. We are growing. All right, guys, here we go. We are excited to have you here. Thank you so much. Now, I want to tell you real quick, guys, don't worry. The patches are coming, okay? This is the patches. If you see me tag you with the hashtag O25, that means you are an original 25, okay? That means you are one of the original 25 original supporters of the Travel Man Dan. You're a Travel Man Danner, okay? I will send you this, and then the merchandise will soon follow, but you will get one of these for free. For those of you that are in Europe, it might take longer. For those of you that are in the United States, I'm going to be putting out these this week. So stay tuned. I just got a little something I'm waiting for in the mail to send them out. Yes, you are definitely an OG Duff. You are definitely. All right, so what would you rather? Real quick, Tenacious Freak, much love. All right, here we go. Please, after this episode is completely over with, go down in the comments and let me know your five answers. There's no right or wrong. Nobody's going to graduate and nobody's going to make an opinion of you. Nobody's going to get offensive. How <laughs> does you wash it? <laughs> Love it. That's how, that's how Uncle Mark washed his clothes. <laughs> okay, here we go. What would you rather? Please, after the show's over, leave me your comments. Hey, Danny, JetBlue direct flight to Charleston. Duff. I can't wait, bro. You know, this 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 year I'm pretty much wrapped up, okay? But next year I'm good to go, man. I'm going to be I'm going to be traveling quite a bit each and every month. I'm going to be going somewhere. So, uh you know, uh, hopefully and I'm going to put it out here on the show. Jordan, hey Brady through 200 at Bills mug. Hey Jordan. Yes, part of the Bills crew. Hey, 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 hey. We got 18. Jordy's in the house. Jordy's in the house. Check it out, Jordy. The only reason we're not drinking out of this, if you weren't here earlier in the show, I chugged a few I chugged a beer out of here. The only reason is is cuz we use this one so I can show what the color of the beer looks like. But guys, we're about to start what would you rather? We have 18 people in the friggin' room at once. Thank you so much. Here we go. Okay, first one. What would you rather go to? I got a ticket for you. I got a ticket for you, and I got a ticket for you. Where are you going to go? Are you going to go to Amsterdam, the Netherlands, where you can get high and meet ladies and do whatever you want? Okay? Okay, would you rather go to Amsterdam, or would you rather go to Doha, Qatar, which... I know it seems crazy, right? Middle East, Doha, no way. But dude, they are building an enormous race. Give Jordan a big hello. Jordy is one of my Buffalo Bills teammates, my club mates. I was just with him a few hours ago. Only if we could get dad running down the street with the flag again. <laughs> I'll miss that one. Give Jordy a big what's up, guys. So where are you going? Are you going to go to uh, Doha? Quetar, or are you going to go to um, Amsterdam, Netherlands? Now, one, you could party. You could smoke it up. You can meet ladies. You can eat all the Dutch chocolates you want. The other one, we don't really know about because, well, unless... Yeah, Steven here, my little bro. And we got 20 in the room. 20 in the room. 20 in the room. Hit that like button, baby. All right. We are about to break up. The, 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 we are about to go to new heights, the largest we've ever got. Can we get a 25? Guys, but we don't know what Quay Tower is like, right? But they've been getting prepared for the World Cup. So they are building amazing buildings at enormous rates. For me, I've been to Amsterdam. Dad, plug your ears, all right? Children, you didn't hear this. This was a long time ago. I had a great time in Amsterdam. 
You know what that's going on. I had a lot of fun back in 2000 there. Stopped over, really good time, had an amazing day. We will do some shots in a minute. Why not? We got 20 people in the room. What should we do? But for me, it's Amsterdam. All right, hold on. We got 20 people. I am, I am thrilled. I am absolutely over the moon. That Where is Uncle John? Uncle John, where is he? He probably got too drunk during the Bills game. All right, what would you rather? Question number two. Really quick, really easy. You walk into a party. It's a massive party. There's tons of shit to do. Are you playing poker or are you playing video games? What's it going to be? For me, I was never a card player. I like video poker, but then when I go to Vegas or Macau, I hate to lose one dollar. Look at Aquanuts. She wants a shot. So I'm going to say video games all the way. What am I playing? I like this game called Guns, Gore, and Cannoli. You're like an old 20s mobster. Hey, how you doing? Eh? Forget about it. Pew, pew. And, um, well, I also really like all the sports games. Look at you guys. All right, poker. Okay, Duff wants poker. So that is your options. Are you doing poker or video games? Please let me know. I'm cleaning out the shot glass. We are going to do it because the crowd is calling for it. Question number three, really simple. You're sitting down, you're at breakfast, okay? Somebody asks you, your waitress, can I get you something to drink, please? How you doing? Um, yes, I would like, um, do you have juice? Yes, we have pineapple, cranberry, but what would you rather have? Apple juice? Yes, at Madden, apple juice or orange juice? What are you drinking, guys? You having the apple juice or you having the orange juice? For me personally, I love orange juice, but it always leaves that weird filament on it. You always get that. So I'm gonna definitely go with apple juice. Apple juice, and if I could, you can definitely put a little twist on it, okay? I'm talking about Williamsville apple cider. Fresh apple cider. <laughs> hey, did you have any black velvet? No, but ladies and gentlemen, they're calling for it. Jordy is here. It is a Buffalo Bills club member. Everybody is here. We have 21 people. I think that might be a record of people. Druna Tick from Denmark wants the orange juice. 21 viewers. We're not doing 21 shots. Okay, we are going to be drinking the Monkey in Paradise vodka. Okay, we will do this and we will finish up on question number four and question number five. You guys are really active and I'm really enjoying it. So please stay tuned, get your shot classes ready. If you have some alcohol, if you have some beer, please get it ready because I'm about to salute you. And this is going to be a big group kind of salute. Okay, here we go. For the largest amount of people in the room at one time, we're going to be drinking Monkey in Paradise vodka from Florida. This stuff is smooth. It's clean. This is a, definitely a beer show. And I know, parents, if you somehow stumble upon this and you say, what the hell? I came to this channel for a reading man, Dan, where he reads books. Bloody Mary, no thanks. And you see me drinking shots, well... The Bills won. My friends are here. We're having a good time. And here it is, guys. Cheers to everybody from Denmark to India to South Carolina to Tonawanda. Cheers and have a good one. Here we go. <laughs> All right. All right, where were we? What would you rather? Now, question number four. What would you rather? Would you rather listen? Now, this is probably for the old timers, but a lot of young people like this. Would you rather listen to on my six blue? <laughs> that's, that's you, Pops. My dad is on a six one. Would you rather listen to, I know this is hard, but you got to pick one, Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin? Okay, what's it going to be? Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin? Both are great. Both are iconic, both are classic, epic, but for me, I'm going to go with Dean Martin because Dean Martin sings all the great Christmas songs. I'm dreaming of a white, yeah, Patrick Fontana, what's up? Yes, guys, we got, 
uh, Pat is here. Uh, sorry, Rick Fontana. Everyone want to say hello to Rick Fontana. Give him a welcome to the weekly beer and video review show. But um, Dean, yes, Junatic or Blue Eyes, Duffy likes Sinatra. But now it's my favorite one. And here it comes. P, that's some more. Right? Like, like a, okay, who do we got? Frankie again. Sorry. No problem. Like, there is no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. And that's the whole thing about what would you rather. Each and every one of us has different tastes. And oftentimes, in something like this, you're a damn fool if you don't like them both. Right? Everybody likes Sinatra. Everybody likes Martin. But if you could only listen to one, what would it be for me, Dean Martin, for Rick? It would be Frankie. But, hey, that's your preference, and I got to respect that, and I definitely can still hang. We can still be friends, and I love it. But now we're getting into the nitty-gritty, the dirty, dirty, the disgusting one. Okay, number five. Here we go. Jordy, you still with us? Here we go. What are you having? What would you rather? Bring it back an old one, right? It's a popsicle, all right? It's a popsicle, and you're sucking on it. You're, um, you're having a good time. You got to eat the whole thing. But that popsicle is made of earwax, okay? So it's an earwax popsicle, okay? Oh, we got 22 in the room. Yes. All right, 22, 22. Who's number 22? All right, so what would you have? An earwax? Yes, Uncle John is in the mother house. Uncle John is here. Give him a Uncle John. Uncle John, Uncle John, Uncle John. All right. So, are you having an earwax popsicle or or a bowl of cereal? But the bowl of cereal is toenails and fingernails. <laughs> Disgusting. And then scratching your throat. And you're going down. You can't stand it. But then sucking on this cereal. We got a winner. Jordy's going with the cereal. Okay. Who's going to go with the earwax? Oh, and I forgot to tell you. The earwax is from a, a hundred different people. Not just one person. It's a bunch of people where they put it on there and they, they construct this popsicle. And the popsicle is not like your regular fudgesicle. It's one of the rocket pops. And so, you know how the rocket pops are red, white, and blue? Well, this is like really smooth earwax, then really dark, and then really hard and crusty earwax that gets stuck more in your Stasian tube. Okay, so are you having the earwax? Or are you having the cereal? For me personally, a bowl of cereal is one of my favorite things to do. As I <laughs> aqua nuts, <laughs> yes, I love it. Bowl of cereal is one of my favorite things to eat, so I don't want to screw with that, and I definitely don't want toenails. Imagine that smell. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to mess with any disgusting uh, cereal things. Do we? <laughs> shot, shot, shot. Guys, you guys are going to... All right. Before, just because it's Bill's opening day, I'll do one more shot. But don't worry. So for me, I'm going with the earwax. I'm going definitely with the popsicle earwax. And that is what I'm sticking with. Guys, we're an hour into the show, and this is what we're drinking from Lord Hobo Brewing. We are on the boom. Yeah, that is going with the earwax. The boom sauce. Really good stuff. We're at the last of it. I'm going to go ahead and take a final swig, give it a score, do another shot, and introduce the other beer. Hang with me. We're almost done. we got about 20 more minutes to a half an hour. We're having fun. Thanks for joining me. we got 22 people here. Here we go. Next beer. Really good. Tasty. All right. Now, based on the name, I thought Boom Sauce would really just like boom you. You know what I mean? Like really just get you really tasty, delicious beer. But to be honest with you, it was good. It had a lemon, a lemon aroma. It had a lemon flavor with an ultra hoppy taste. It's definitely strong, but didn't really boom me, right? Didn't overwhelm me. Not that it's a bad beer. I haven't had a beer since 26C that was bad. But this beer wasn't exactly the best of beers. That's why I'm going to give it a score of 7. Okay, Not the greatest score. When I go back to it, just on name, just to bring it to the party, boom! Yeah, I would. 
but is it the greatest beer? Yeah, you know, I've had better, but one thing that you're going to get with it is the name. Boom, okay? But you're also going to get a 7.8 percenter. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you should try this one out. Brian, no shout at you, 100%. Thank you so much. Um, it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. But now, let's go ahead. You guys want to see another shot? We got 23 people in the room. Lord have mercy. It is, a, it is awesome. I'm going to do one more, and that is it. I'm not doing two more, because i got to finish the show. And like I said, I do not want to finish the show like this. Hey, and then... Yeah, we got Tenacious Freak, and uh, my dad is here. Yeah, we got to we gotta stay very clear of that, okay? We don't want to get too smacked up on this show. But I will do another one, because it's Bill's opening weekend. Having a fun time. You guys are having good. Everybody ready? Everybody got their shot ready? Please, I'm giving you guys 30 seconds to get your shot ready. So each and every time we do this show... Make sure that you have your little bottle of liquor ready. Obi! Yes! No, Obi is not the only girl. Obi is from Laos. Obi and Aquanuts. Obi, Obi, Obi. What's up, Obi? Glad to have you here. We are doing, we have 24 people in the room. Obi is from Laos. So we have people from Mexico City. We have people from Los Angeles, India, Norway, England. Man, we are. Get, everyone say hi to Obi. Yes, please. Okay, Obi, we are drinking this one in honor of Greg Z because it is from Florida and we are having fun. And then we're going to go ahead and drink the second beer from Cousin Brian. So thank you so much for joining me. And we're about to get into the second beer. And I'm going to tell you what we're doing next week's video. Okay, so here we go. Salute, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. We are at, <laughs> all right, Obi from Laos. All right, good to have you here. This is it. We are drinking another shot of vodka. Good to have each and every one of you guys here. We are at record-breaking numbers live in the room for the show today. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you go back and tell me your what would you rather. And now the 30 seconds are up. So if you have a shot, raise it up. Cheers to you. Here we go. <laughs> wow all right so we have a couple of new people here we got obi no obi's been here before but we have we have jordy who is new and that's the way we do it here jordy we give you a big welcome to the travel man dan weekly beer and video review show so thank you so much for joining us and now it is time and we got john yes john galvin is here very nice to have you here. We got Rick Fontana who was here first last week. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to the next beer. I'm going to talk about this beer. So, from the Harpoon Brewing Company. Seatbelt time. Hold on. Alright, from the Harpoon Brewing Company. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hoppy Floral Crisp Indian Pal Ale proudly presents Harpoon IPA. Yeah, check it out. I don't know if that is that a tiger or a fox. I'm not really sure. It's a little distorted. It kind of looks like a tiger, but it's got a face. Hey, John, welcome to the show. But let's take a look. It is a hoppy floral IPA. Now, if you're new to the show, we go ahead and crack it open. We take a whiff, and I tell you my initial smell. So here we go. Here we go. No smell at all. Absolutely zilch on the aroma. Okay, kind of smells like meat. Not really good there. All right, well, let's go ahead and pour it in the glass, and I'll tell you, <laughs> seatbelt. I know, I'm moving around, I'm having fun, but that's all right. Thanks for hanging with me. Let's go ahead and pour the sucker in. Oh, yeah, much darker than the last one. Much darker than our last beer even though the last beer was a double ipa this is what a traditional ipa would look like and although it is getting later in the show and i am definitely feeling it after a few shots you can see the pour is much more carbonated okay we got about two and a half inches of thick foam 
Oh, it looks so good, Dennis. Here you go, buddy. I'll pass it through the internet. <laughs> yeah, this one is going to look good. Now, one thing that I noticed about this one is it doesn't taste, after two beers and two shots, it smells like, <laughs> it smells like meat. It didn't smell like anything. Now, this one doesn't have the IPA like funnel. It has more of a IPA cloud going on, like a brown cloud going on. Initial beer definitely looks good, right? It's a tiger fox, right? Ooh, tiger fox. I like that, Rick. Thank you. Now let's go ahead and let's cut through the head. Let's cut through the foam and taste it. Oh my gosh. That is delicious. Oh no. Oh man. Oh man. You don't have no, I don't have COVID. No. Oh man, that is good. That is good. That is so good. Okay, so good. Cousin Brian. Now this is another beer sent to me by Cousin Brian in New England. So if you don't know the United States geography, New England is about 3,000 plus miles from California. And Cousin Brian sent me enough for six weeks. We have 25 people in this room at once. That is record breaking. It is absolutely a glorious afternoon. Thank you everybody. Thank you. It's a solid beer. It's delicious. The one thing that I noticed about it is how smooth it is. It's clean. It's crisp. It's really refreshing. It's really cold. I'm really enjoying this one. Um, this is the kind of IPA that I like. Okay. Back in the day when me and my dad used to meet up at this bar called the Shanghai Brewery. Pops, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, they used to serve us um, they had the IPA, the original IPA, and then they had the, like all American IPA. I forget Patriot IPA. I forget what it was called. It was a little bit different, but the way that it tasted was no hoppiness to it, but it still had the power. That's what I'm tasting with this Harpoon IPA. Really cool, kind of simple colors. Um, delicious beer. Really clear, crisp and clear. I really. I, I, it seems like a high score. I'm gonna. You know, I'm not going to judge it to everyone. Cheers, Aquanuts. Aquanuts. Everybody. Guys, let's give a big cheers to Aquanuts. One, two, three. Cheers, Aquanuts. Yes. Send me those cups. Send me those, you know, cheers. All right. This is a drinking show. Jordy is here. All right. Hey, hey, hey. The Bills won. We're having a good time. Now I want to talk about the video that's coming out this week. Now, a lot of you guys that are American might not even know about this one. But if you're here on the West Coast, you probably know about it, especially here in California. But if you're around the world, you definitely haven't heard about this one. I'm still not going into restaurants. So for this week's Food Friday video, I'm going to go to a really fun place. A really, um, well, I guess it's fast food, but it's a little higher end. And we're going to have some roasted chicken. Guys, I'm talking about El Pollo Loco. That's right. El Pollo Loco is a really fun, interesting, fun franchise. It's a fast food with a drive through that you can go through and you can get burritos. You can get salady beer when it comes. Please do, Brian. Please do. Chuck E. Cheese. Now, El Pollo Loco is a lot of fun here. Now, you know, in L.A., you can get some of the best Mexican authentic food in the world but if you want fast food stay tuned and get ready for this Friday as I drive through the El Pollo local place North Star yes North Star dad that's what it was and going to have I will definitely try mod pizza the problem with mod pizza is I got to be able to go inside right and I got to be able to film Mod Pizza is this place me and Jordy were talking about a few hours ago. It's kind of like Subway, where you go in, you order your dough, you order your sauce, you order your toppings. I'm definitely going to go and do it. Jordy, how would you like to be part of that video? I would love to have you part of that video. When things open up and things get better, I'm going to definitely invite you to that video. But if you're, if you're ready for it, get ready for El Pollo Loco. I'm going to order some 100% nice. Pound it. I'm going to order some fun, exciting chicken and show you how we eat roasted chicken through the drive-thru. And it's actually really good. They give you tortillas. And well, if you want to find out more, check out the video coming up this week. 
on this week's episode of Food Friday. Now it's time for one of my favorite episodes. It's time for Baro's favorite episode, my boy from India. Get ready for this day in history, eh? All right, get ready. Here we go. Now, you got to be very careful. Cousin Brian not only is a beer connoisseur who sends his cousin much love. Big hugs, Cousin Brian. But Cousin Brian is also... I really want to go to LA so I can go to the Rainbow on Sunset. I know the... Aston, if you come here, I will take you to the Rainbow on Sunset. Not a problem. My friend plays there all the time. He's good friends with all that. Yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's, it's a hardcore rock and roll, 80s style. Yes, we got you, bro. We got you. But, um, but Cousin Brian is an actual history teacher. So for this day in history, I got to be very careful. I got to do my homework. I got to do my research. You don't want to say anything stupid. No, you're wrong. You're freaking wrong, dude. All right, here we go. This day in history. Like I said, I'm not a history professor. I just say some cool events that happen on this day in history. And on this day in history, September 13th, 1503. Long time ago, 1503. Michelangelo, the great Italian sculptor, began his work on the statue of David. Da -da -da -da. No, that is pretty cool. Started his work. Now I've been to Italy and I've seen the statue of video. I've seen those balls and that penis. I've been there to Italy and seen that perfectly sculpted marble genitalia. And well, about 500 years ago, Michelangelo started building it on this day in history. On this day in history, in 1845, English chemist Michael Faraday discovers what's called the Faraday effect. Okay, now what is the Faraday effect? It is the influence on a magnetic field against polarized light. Okay, what that is. I'm not really sure, but scientifically, it means tons of good stuff. So check it out, do the research yourself, but it's a major, major invention and an advancement in our history. Michael Faraday. All right, I got to go back to the Harpoon IPA. I'm getting all excited about <laughs> the Statue of David. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Cheers. Having a good show. Aquanuts is having fun. I'm glad I'm keeping it light. And if you guys are laughing and we're having a good time, that's what it's all about, right? Wow. Delicious. Really delicious. It's almost like a Pilsner, but a little bit stronger. Just that little extra strength that you need in a Pilsner. Um, it's not really um, very aromatic where you're, 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 you're taking it in and as you're putting right about here you're smelling it, some IPAs, you're right about here and you can smell it. <laughs> Best show ever. <laughs> ah, tenacious freak, I love you, man. Uh, yes, I've never get excited to turn your camera up. I don't want to see that. Jack, just cheers. <laughs> yes, Cousin Jack. Yes, Cousin Jack. All right, Jack Attack. I love you, buddy. I hope you're doing good. Looking forward to seeing you. I got my ticket to Buffalo. I'll be flying home December 22nd. Looking forward to it. But yeah, really delicious beer. I mean, I'm really enjoying this one. Harpoon IPA. Cousin Brian, solid beer right here. All right, now, on this day in history, September 13th. No, no more shots. <laughs> Rick, no more shots. They're going to be... We don't want to do that. All right, on this day... The Straw Hats Riot began in New York City as people protest the right to wear a straw hat. Um, if you don't know what the Straw Hat Riots were, in 1921, there was this thing. Remember the whole, like, the, the, sometimes they're called popcorn hats. They're like these weird, like, straw hats, right? Well, there was a big movement going on back in the 20s and or late teens in New York City and the thing was is you can only wear these straw hats during like social events and at nighttime where or maybe a Sunday when you're out on the lawn playing a little golf right okay but 
people would still wear them as part of the outfit. Hey, Kyle, yes, what's up, dog? Good to have you here. Another part of the Buffalo Bill fan club who see me down about three or four donuts tonight. They made a sci-fi movie that used to hide from the monsters. Yeah, so, so, so the straw hat movement was this crazy thing where, like, in New York City, <clears throat> people would still wear their straw hats because in the early turn of the century, from like 1900 or 1901 to like 1918, people wore straw hats and that was the fashion. But then they said, no, that's 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 bullshit. You can't stop. You, you need to stop wearing those hats. That's um, it's disrespectful. It's um, it's not uh, it's not cleanliness, and it's it's just it, it's just not affluent, right? So teenagers would go and jack these fools like, bah, 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 they would go beat them up if they were wearing straw hats, and so it started this whole riot movement, weeks upon weeks. And what happened is these bunch of teenagers came up to these dock workers in 1922, and they tried to take their straw hats, take them off their hat, and and crush them like the government asked them to do but then these workers sorry Brian sorry sorry Jack said a little Jack don't say those words until you're a little bit older but um but then they pummeled them the dock workers pummeled them <laughs> someone said another shot no Jordy I'm not doing another shot they pummeled them right and then after that, another group of teenagers came out, and it was just crazy, like three weeks of riots. Check out the Straw Hat Riots on this day in history on September 13th, 1922, the Straw Hat Riots began. All right, moving right along. On this day in history, September 13th, 1938, Alex Cartwright. Alex Cartwright, if you don't know, if Alex Cartwright... Sorry, Jack. Sorry, Brian. Brenna, if you're listening, I'm sorry for teaching your son bad words. I am the crazy cousin. All right. Alex Cartwright is inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame. I know what you're saying. Who is Alex Cartwright? Alex Cartwright is the inventor of baseball. That's right. He invented the game of baseball. Okay, now it's been largely argued and things like this, like, oh no, he wasn't. It was a pastime of the Native Americans. And much respect to them, but Alex Cartwright was the actual inventor of American baseball, who put it together, who put the plays together, who put the bases and the rules and everything together. And on this day in history, he was inducted in 1938 to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. <laughs> he learned this one. <laughs> he learned that. Uh, all right. So I'm just going to try not to swear. But yeah, on this day in history, 1938, Alex Cartwright was inducted to the Hall of Fame in baseball. All right. On this day in history, in 1955, Swiss inventor George de Mastrel was granted a patent for what would become known as Velcro. Yes. In 1955, Velcro was um, was invented by a Swiss inventor, and he got the patent. It. Um, I'm not sure when it actually came out into the public. Greg Z knew it. Collect straw. <laughs> Tenacious freak. <laughs> yeah. um, so Velcro was created, and um, and well, it was patented, and then probably years later, it came out into products. But um, shot, shot, shot. Oh no, no, no. But um. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's really fun to know where these things came up, especially as I grew up in, in the 80s when when Velcro sneakers came out. It was like a little bit of tie and then a Velcro strap. Really fun, really exciting. But on this day in history, in 1955, the Swiss inventor, George de Mastrial, was granted the patent for Velcro. And lastly, this one's going to be fun. This one's going to be fun. Everyone's can rally around this one. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, this one is gonna be exciting. You are gonna love this one in 1985. Okay, 1985. Super Mario Brothers game first appears. Okay, it was created by. Let me get this right. I gotta look down my notes. Seguro Miyamoto. Okay, Invi invented Super Mario Brothers. Do -do 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 -do. All right, I use my Velcro underwear. <laughs> Go ahead. So, ladies and gentlemen, 1985. This was the day 
and Super Mario Brothers, one of the most iconic, world, global, iconic figures in all of pop culture, video games, um, whatever you want to call it, movies, um, it, uh, just symbols of funness, classic epicness. Mario Brothers was created by Shigeru Miyoko. Um, yeah, so pretty wrong here. Oh no, cousin Brian. No, no. I got, I got stumped. What year? 1981. No, I got 1985. Cousin Brian, we we got a, we got a little dilemma. So I was told it was 1985. I researched it. He was in Donkey Kong. Guys, don't hold me to that. Let's move on. Guys, Cousin Brian is the history teacher. And I would love, I would love who here. Okay, everyone give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see Cousin Brian go into a split screen for this day in history. Wouldn't that be freaking awesome if this day in history was brought to us by Cousin Brian. And then we went to a split screen and then Cousin Brian showed up and gave us five to six days in history. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Tenacious Freak is in there. <laughs> or maybe even Cousin Jack. Okay. Now mind you, Jack is six years old. But definitely I would love to, to, to pass that along. Yes, look at this. Cousin Brian, Cousin Jack. People want you to do this day in history. Yes, that would be awesome. Say, we need to split screen this thing for this day in history and let you take over. Cousin Brian, we'll be talking. Steve likes it. Steve, <laughs> dude, I've had, this, I've had this idea for about two months. And I really want to do it, guys. I really want to do it. I'm going to call Cousin Brian. I don't mean to put you on the spot live or whatever. And maybe Cousin Jack will do it. But I think this day in history will be a fun time for me to sit back, relax, split the screen, and let or, 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 or full screen, and let Cousin Brian and Little Jack take over and do this segment. Uh, give it, yes, three thumbs up, <laughs> Cousin Brian. You in? Guys, if you're just joining us, we are doing Harpoon IPA. Cuz, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I swear to God, that's what I want to do. So if you're down with it, let me know. We're going to work that into the show. It might not happen for a little bit, but maybe we can do something. All right, this is what we're doing, the Harpoon IPA. It's a delicious IPA. It's smooth. It's clean. It's refreshing. It's got a bit of a floral taste to it. But now it is time for one of the funnest segments let me know what you're doing it is time for no shots though no we're gonna we're gonna slow down on the shots though we're down doing the what are you reading what are you watching I'll think about it yeah <laughs> Brian come on Brian please we want you have Brian send you all your history data no I'm getting called out no I promise you 99.9% .9 of my history data is absolutely correct. Okay? <laughs> no, tenacious freak. We're having a hell of a time. Guys, it's time for what are you reading? What are you watching? What are you reading? This is what I'm reading. It's called Middle of Nowhere. It is a great monologue that I think that is, that is will really, really work on my skill as, um, well, I told you I've been mentioned many times before as an actor. I'm working on monologues right now. So uh, this one, middle of nowhere, is about a guy is convincing his girl to move to the countryside to become like, well, not like farmer, farmer, but more like, um, like I'm going to farm some stuff and we're going to, and we're going to farm some stuff on, uh, um, and we're going to do some, uh, like, uh, like a farmer's markets type stuff really fun good stuff always continue to be working always continue to be creating stuff um listen my studio is small and reading this is getting me prepared for when i get the big one you guys have fun you gotta put jack to bed jack see you later buddy cousin brian we'll be talking 
I'm serious. It just came up organically. But I've always wanted to get you on the show for this day in history. Think about it. Band of Brothers is awesome. You know, I went out for Band of Brothers, uh, the Pacific one. But yeah, let me know what you're reading, what you're watching. I'm reading the Middle of Nowhere. It's a great monologue. What am I watching? What am I watching? Again, Umbrella Academy. That's awesome. By the way, what am I watching? Who knows what I'm watching? Whoosh. Whoosh. Karate Kid, mother... Yeah, Karate Kid. Cobra Kai. Okay? Are you Mio Miyagi Dojo? Or are you Strike First, Strike Hard, Cobra Kai? All right, what you doing? Really fun, good stuff, especially if you're a dude a little bit older and you grew up on Karate Kid. It is fantastic. The show, you know, the funny thing is, is <laughs> Cobra Kai, yes. The funny thing is, it's like, I find myself sometimes watching like teenagers fall in love. <laughs> and like, I still, I'm not married. I don't have any children. I don't know, um, yeah, I, if that, I, <laughs> and stuff. Um, but 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 it's just good, man. All all the references back to the original Karate Kids movies, I absolutely love it. They knocked it out of the park. Love the show. Netflix is called Cobra Kai. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I think that you're if you're a fan of the Karate Kid, <laughs> well, I think if you're a fan of the Karate Kid, you'll enjoy it. It's definitely really good. And now let's get back into this Harpoon IPA. I'm going to leave you with a score and leave you with the quote of the week. It's smooth. Farm some micro brews. <laughs> you know, the thing I like about this beer is, well, it's really clean, right? There's no... There's no aftertaste, there's no funkiness. Although it's an IPA, it's not like that harsh, like, wow, I got slammed with a pine tree. Did I just go snow blowing with, um, or, or was I in a snowmobile and, and Jimmy Scholl was in the front and I was behind him and I didn't see that pine hanging and it smacked me in the face? Do I have a girlfriend? <laughs> Borrow, that is undecided. That is undecided, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm watching football. What are you watching? I, I got to watch it in a minute, but we're going to hurry up on this show. Guys, I'm going to finish the last bit of the harpoon. We got through all the segments. I'm going to drop this quote on you, give the score, and then we're going to close out the show. We had an amazing show today. Man, harpoon IPA. Really delicious. I'm gonna get it right quick with it. I'm not gonna stall or fancy anything. It was clean, it was crisp. People will like it, no matter who you are. It's a delicious beer, it's strong. It's only about 4%, but it feels stronger. Maybe that's the shots, I don't know. But definitely, would I go back to this one? Absolutely. That's why I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it a solid score of eight. Guys, we had this beer, boom sauce. Okay, that scored at a seven. We had Harpoon IPA that scored it at a seven, an eight. Really delicious, really fun stuff. Had some shots. We broke records today. We had like, I think 24 people live on the show. That's huge for me. That's huge for my growth. As I continue to grow, I'll continue to get better. I'll continue to expand soon. Within the next few months, we're gonna expand the studio. I'm gonna have live in in studio guests that are drinking beers with me within the next three to six months. Boy, the show's gonna look completely different, but it's all about the evolution. It's all about growing. But thank you so much for those of you that are the O25. You will be getting one of these awesome Travel Man Dan patches. These are coming to you. I'm gonna send them directly to you. Please DM me. Oh man, it's been a lot of fun. Now I'm going to leave you with the quote of the week. And the quote of the week, thank you, Aston. Thank you, Bubba. It's <laughs> going to be epic. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. Listen, you got to understand, like, it's all about Dan. Nice show today. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Aquanauts. This is, this, is, this is the beginning. This is the start, okay? 
as I continue to grow, we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, it's going to be awesome. So here is, thank you. Here's the quote of the week. And this was brought to us by sci-fi author Ray Bradbury. Red, <laughs> Ray Bradbury. Okay, he said this. If you don't know Ray Bradbury, he wrote Fahrenheit 451, Something Wicked Comes This Way. He said this. Beer is intellectual. What a shame so many idiots drink it. <laughs> it's classic. Right? Beer is intellectual. What a shame so many idiots drink it. Alright, now that is that is funny because <laughs> everybody drinks beer. And you know, definitely as you drink it you become more of an idiot. I think that's that's a given, right? <laughs> Trying to take a grease. But um, Ray Bradbury, science fiction author, really funny stuff. Keep it light this week. Remember, don't be a friggin' idiot. Drink some beer. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe from COVID. Watch some cool things. Read some stuff. Okay? Find out about history. If you find out about one thing in history during the week, that's cool, right? Find out what it was like. Okay? Take your hat off. Get away from all the freaking noise. Just sit in a quiet place and think about, geez, what if I was born in 1761 when this happened? Okay? And that's what really this day in history is all about. Is like, man, what if what if, what if we were born in this? We're born in an amazing time. I watched the Bills games at my friend's house with 14 donuts, a chocolate cake, 52 wings. A bunch of beers and good people. But what if this was 1501? Like, think of this shit, right? Take some time. Thank you, Rick. Take some time. Take in each segment. Understand it. You know, try to think of what this quote means. You know, you're not an idiot. You just like beer. But when you drink beer, you might be an idiot. Guys, I can't say thank you. This is a record-breaking show. We probably went the longest. We are the most people. Thank you so much. I give you guys much love. Thank you, Baba. 20 wins. <laughs> Baba, I'm going to see you in New York, man. I'll be home in December. I'm going to be home for about 10 days. I'm really excited. If you guys are in New York, please come to Western New York. Meet me, Pops, Uncle John, Little Stevie. Meet me and Cousin Brian. Thank you so much for the great show. I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Stay safe. Be good. I'm really thankful that you guys joined me. I appreciate everything. Have a good one. I'm Travel Man Dan. And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Thank you. Thank you, Baro. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Tenacious Freak. Aquanuts. Baba. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys.